In the previous lessons, we've been talking about the different policies and different relationships between the monarchy and parliament under the reigns of both um, James I and on also Charles. Well, in this lesson, we're going to start by talking about we're going to start the conversation um, of the beginnings of the breakdowns between the relationship between Charles I and Parliament and how this led ultimately to the um, English Revolution and the English Civil War. And we'll begin by talking about what is known as a period of personal rule. So if we get my little... Uh, oh, there we go. So we're talking about the period of personal rule. And this was a period of history from around 1629 to the year 1640. And it was during this period that there was a great amount of opposition to all forms of policy reform. So there was effectively opposition to everything. So we had basically opposition, opposition, oopsie daisy, wait for it to load. Oop. We had opposition um, to effectively everything in this period okay now what we're going to do in this lesson is talk about um, beginning um, looking at the different um, kinds of policy reforms and opposition to said policy reforms and we'll begin by talking about reforms made to religion and religious practices and this was if you remember from the last few lessons one of the key areas of um, opposition when it comes to the relationship between the king and parliament the um, the support that Charles gave or at least uh, the appeasement we should say that Charles gave to um, for, for uh, the, the Catholics, um, especially following a number of plots under the reigns of um, James and Charles. And we also have the different um, support for Arminianism and um, other kinds of religious sects. Now, we begin by talking about the Archbishop Lord, who was given effectively a very high amount of control over the reforms made to religious practices. And as you can imagine, if Parliament wasn't very happy with this Archbishop here, then we can understand that they're not going to be very happy with the practices that they uh, implemented. And we'll begin by talking about the beauty of holiness. Now, this was a policy uh, as a result of Lord's keen um, keen ambition to promote Armenian practices. Now, don't forget for the most part, this was opposed by Parliament. Opposed by Parliament. Okay. And effectively what happened was Lord wanted to make sure that the rules and practices of um, different um, you know, religious practices were strictly adhered to. And so a number of reforms were made. We have things such as the installation of organs in churches, and we also have the installations of things such as stained glass windows in a number of churches. Now, these all reforms meant um, to promote the stimulating um, church practices. Okay, uh, These reforms were supposed to make the, the, the practice of going to church um, more and more, quote-unquote, stimulating. Um, if you can believe it. And all of these reforms were obviously objectionable by Puritans and Puritanism. And of course, um, this uh, extends to Parliament. This extends to Parliament, if you remember from previous lessons. And on top of these reforms and the reforms made to church practices, we also have reforms made to um, the structure of the church at the time, a number of religious practices, uh, sorry, religious um, reforms. And this was more than just reforming church practices. Lord also introduced a number of hierarchical reforms, okay? So we have a different example of how the hierarchy and the structure of the church was operating. Archbishops were obligated to report to Charles directly, okay? Priests were given the roles of justices of the peace, so they were given almost um, uh, law enforcement uh, roles within within the countrysides and, and different areas of the of the state. And Charles had also reissued the previously published Book of Sports in 1633, and the Book of Sports allowed a number of activities to take place on the Sabbath on Sundays. And in response to the um, questionable Puritan beliefs that Sunday should only be a day of worship and religious practice, you can understand that this would have caused conflict between 
um, the, the, the new uh, church practices that were issued under Lord and the um, different um, practices that Charles supported with the Book of Sports. And then obviously they all clashed with the objectionable um, belief that um, Puritanism uh, believed that Sunday should be a day of worship and religious practice and not a day to do any kind of activities uh, as listed in the Book of Sports. So again, you can see how this um, causes conflict, caused conflict uh, between between the king and parliament. We can see how this would cause uh, plenty of conflict between the two, and this opposition. Okay, was actually heard at the time, and we obviously know that Parliament has been very vocal during this period about whether or not they supported these different policies that were introduced by Charles and also by James as well. So Lord, in response to increasing Puritan opposition of these reforms, decided to uh, dismiss a number of Puritan ministers, okay, try to cleanse, if you will, um, a lot of the areas of government from um, these, Puritan, um, these Puritan beliefs. And a great number of Puritans would eventually migrate uh, to North American colonies to escape what they believed to be uh, persecution. Now, the, the extent to which it was persecution is, uh, is a debate to be had. However, you could probably understand that all of these different Armenian practices and um, reforms put in place with the support of the king would have um, felt um, quite, it wouldn't have felt particularly pre uh, pleasant for somebody who was a Puritan. And the most high-profile examples of this Puritan opposition was um, that of um, Bastwick, uh, Burton and Pine, or Preen, sorry. And these were Puritans who had resisted the reforms made by Lord. They were vocal oppositions. Um, Bastwick and Burton were both ministers who had either attacked a number of bishops or presented uh, religious sermons that deviated from the approved practice. Okay, So they were um, these religious sermons were obviously um, made in in opposition in opposition um, to the reforms to the reforms we also see um, the likes of Prine who was a lawyer who um, had written a book here uh, that is um, pronounced histo <laughs> I'm not going to try and pronounce it okay <laughs> and this was an attack on theatre and actors okay now eventually all of these vocal uh, opposition, the vocal sermons and the writing of, uh, of this particular work here, here um, these were all brought to the Star Chamber uh, of 1637 and they um, were, were put on trial. They were brought for, uh, put for trial. And, a res and their ultimate punishment for this, um, pra these religious um, sermons and for the publishing of this work were that they were fined, they were imprisoned for life, and they had parts of their ears cut off. And you can obviously see that this was quite a, a brutal punishment. A brutal um, punishment. And so therefore, um, obviously would cause further um, opposition and further religious opposition uh, to these reforms that were made. Now in the next lesson, what we're going to do is talk a little bit more detail about this period of personal rule and look at other reforms that were put into practice and how this increased further opposition and further conflict between Charles and his parliaments.